Hello and welcome in. Mark here, aka the Markster. This is video number 21 in the Free Cat series. Today we'll be looking a little more in depth at Boolean operations. First, let's see which version of FreeCAD I'm using. <clears throat> 0 0.19 is the pre release version. Revision number 19694. And I'm using Windows 10. Let's create a new document. We've already covered the two most commonly used Boolean operations, the cut and the fusion. And uh, we have not yet covered one of the lesser used ones, this one here also commonly used. But it's called a common or intersection and there is one in this submenu here called boolean exclusive or. So those are the four boolean operations. So why do we call them boolean operations? Well it comes from a 19th century mathematician by the name of George Boole came up with the concept of Boolean variables uh, where each variable can be true or false or in computers it can be used as one or zero so there are four different ways that you could combine two Boolean variables and get a different result you have the R the AND, exclusive OR, and the AND NOT or NAND. So the union is an OR Boolean logic comparison. Let's add a two, two objects here. We'll take a cube and a cylinder. So if we do a union or fusion of these two objects and we can add our refined property to true if it's not already true. Notice the seam line here, these two. What's going to happen? So that's the refine operation that's built into these Boolean operations. So the union creates a solid, single solid object <clears throat> out of the two parent objects. So that's an OR operation. If A exist in this area or if B exists in this area or has material in this location in 3D space then the result will have material in that location so that's an OR operation the fusion is a logical OR boolean OR the common let's undo this one I'm just going to delete it here the common is the AND function. <clears throat> In order to produce material, object A must have material in that location and object B must also have material in that location. So the common operation or intersection is an AND, a Boolean AND operation. So, so we see the result is only that only that object where material exists from both of the parent objects in that location. Let's undo this one. I'm just going to press the delete key. Now let's look at the cut operation and consider what Boolean logic that represents. Let's select the, the cube first as the base cylinder second as a cutting tool and do the cut. Now we've cut this shape into the cube. <clears throat> so what Boolean logic is the cut operation? It's the NAND or NOT AND or AND NOT operation. So we have material only where the base object 
cube has material and where not cylinder material is located. So that's the cut operation. Let's delete that one. And now let's look at the exclusive R. Select both of our objects. We can select Boolean exclusive R here or in the menu under the split section boolean exclusive R. So what we have here with the boolean exclusive R if A or B but not both A and B is the logic there. So we only have material where object A exists or object B exists but not both A or B exclusively. Essentially this is the same operation as if we had fused these two objects in one operation. Let's undo this to demonstrate. We could fuse these. Then we could also take the common and then we could cut the common out of the fusion. So we've done all of these operations with just one operation, one exclusive R. So that's a lot simpler a lot simpler tree results from just the one operation. The more operations you have to perform, the slower the recompute takes, or the longer it takes to do a recompute. This is insignificant in such a small model as this one, but when you have larger, more complex models, every little advantage can help. And certainly it helps when viewing a tree and recognizing how the object was created maybe several months ago. So those are the basic Boolean operations and the Boolean logic behind those operations. While we're here, and since we're almost only at the eight minute mark, let's continue looking at some of the other tools that are available in the part workbench. One tool we have that we haven't looked at yet is this cross-section tool. So we select our object. Let's select this exclusive R object and apply this tool. So we see here a red line represents the cross-section that we're going to acquire when we apply this operation or when we click the OK button. We can choose different planes. We can choose to have multiple sections. We can choose the location of those sections and we can have on both sides or just on the original side. Let's cancel and start again. So this would move this up and down. By default it's in the middle. Say OK. Now we have a new object. The name of the original underscore CS. CS for a cross section. If we hide the exclusive R, we can see what the cross section looks like. We can use this cross section in the extrude function. But this wire has issues because of the overlapping areas. We can convert this cross section to a sketch 
go through the drive menu there's a terrific tool in here Go drive to sketch tool this converts by directional between sketch objects and and non-sketch objects so then we can open the sketch up and we can modify this and we would want to remove well let's see if we were going to recreate this object from this sketch this sketch here is not going to be workable because there are too many intersecting areas so we'd have to do it in two sketches we could turn this part let's see it would be these these parts here into construction mode and then we could extrude that this is useful for reverse engineering some op some model that you brought into FreeCAD from another CAD and it's not parametric it has no history you just import it and this is the only object you got and you want to remodel it so taking a cross section can be useful for that you can also perhaps get a, a view of the interior of your object if you're doing something like threads and you want to see what kind of clearance you have you can take a cross section and it'll be a little easier to see how far apart the, the various threads are to each other. One limitation of this operation is that it's non-parametric. So if we go back up to history and change this cube, it will not be reflected in this object. If we look at our dependency graph, if it'll work for us, we see that the cut is dependent upon the common and the fusion, which are both dependent upon the box and the cylinder. Exclusive R has arrows pointing to the box and the cylinder. These three objects here are not dependent upon the box and the cylinder. Extrude is dependent upon the sketch. Sketch is not dependent on the cross section. Cross section is off by itself. There's a sec there's a video on the dependency graph. I don't remember exactly which one it was. But this is a tool in the tools menu. Dependency graph. It requires an application, a third party application called GraphViz that must be installed separately is not included in FreeCAD. GraphViz.org is the website for that. It's free. Okay, so what if we wanted a parametric cross-section? Let's hide this and hide that and show what are we going to show? cut let's just create a new document and we'll fuse these together and we'll set refine to true oh by the way you wouldn't need to have copied that other sketch converted the interior to Um, construction mode, swap construction mode, uh, extruded that and then made a cut out of here to, to recreate what you started with uh, with the uh, exclusive R object. Alright, so if we wanted a parametric section we need to add a plane. Let's just make it 100 by 100 so it'll be big enough, too big doesn't matter. 
right click the plane and locate it where we want it at for which cross section that we want and now we select both objects I'll use this tool here make a section of two shapes so now we have our cross section and I believe if we go to draft we can also convert this into a sketch by the way you can combine multiple sketches in a sketch workbench if we look at the sketch menu merge sketches so if you had a number of cross sections and you wanted to combine them into a single sketch you can do that with the merge sketches feature there's also a validate sketch tool which we haven't looked at yet maybe we'll save that for later let's stick with uh, part workbench right now since that's what we're focused on we'll look at that validate tool later on we can check the geometry of a sketch look at the shape content see we have five edges one wire a wire is a contiguous section of edges we have no shell no solid no faces we have a tool here called advanced utility to create shapes this is something we haven't looked at yet by the way the the sketch the sketch here would not be parametric tools you see the sketch by itself but the section is so if we changed let's just change the uh, let's just change the cylinder radius F5 to recompute and you see that I lied to you and the sketch was not parametric Well, the sketch is not I'm sorry the section is okay so the section is parametric F5 to recompute but not the sketch I did say that but I had to sketch I had to sketch visible and not the section so, sorry about that so now let's move from cross sections to this tool here advanced utility to create shapes this is a tool that you can use to create shapes so if we want to create a face from these edges we can choose face from edges I have not tried this in advance so hopefully it'll work we can choose planar and create now we have a face there's one drawback to this operation to this tool it's non-parametric so that's a little bit of a deal breaker we always want to make parametric models so um, just keep in mind it's not going to be parametric so if we change the cylinder radius that face is not going to change to reflect it we'll have to go back in and make the face again this limits the usefulness of this tool but we can use that face for example to extrude and do, do whatever operation we want uh, lofting it should work with all these tools let me delete that one <clears throat> we can also use this tool to create edges from vertices so let's imagine 
that we are interested in this uh, arc here and making a, an edge straight across here then we're not concerned about these for the moment this is the shape that we're trying to build maybe to interface with uh, a step file or something that we downloaded from a manufacturer website so we can create an edge from these vertices selected two vertices and this would work with a sketch too we can create an edge there and then we would create a wire from edges let's close it now and see we have a wire here we can hide the edge hide the section this is non-parametric let's look at the dependency graph failed to create an image sometimes that happens I don't know why sometimes it doesn't work but anyway it would sh it would have shown that this is not parametric all by itself so we could actually delete all this now and it would not affect this object but anyway now we have a wire we could convert it to a sketch if we wanted to oh, that's actually in draft menu draft workbench and this goes back and forth both directions we can convert the sketch into a draft object too which again is non-parametric back to part we can make a shell from faces uh, edge from vertices wire from edges face from vertices face from edges shell from faces solid from shell what's a shell it's a good question what is a shell well a shell is a combination of faces but no interior so we can make a shell uh, let's just bring in what do we want to bring in a cube here let's hide that for the moment Let's create some points as a starting place. If you click location, select 3D view and click a location, create. It creates the vertex at that location. I did not show you that uh, last time we looked at this tool. So we select 3D view, a vertex, and create. 3D view, a vertex, create. So now we have, hopefully, three ver vertex objects. there there and there and let's add one more point here so we can create a shell close this this is the view from the front This should work for us, I believe. This is a little bit unrehearsed. All right, let's go back to our create a shape tool. Edge from vertices. Two at a time, create. And select these two and create. And now the 
these two. Create an edge. And these two, create another edge. And need one more edge between these two points. And now, let's see if we can make <clears throat> a face from edges. We'll make it planar. It needs to be a planar face if you're going to extrude it or use some other uh, similar tool. But it need not be necessarily planar. So there's the face there. We'll select uh, these three edges and a face here and these three edges and a face here and one more face on these three these three edges. Hopefully I'm getting the right ones here. Hard to tell, but I think I do have the right ones. All right, so this is it's not a shell yet. Let's close this. I might not have it right. I might have created that last face. Yeah, the last face is a duplicate. <clears throat> I wasn't certain. Now I know which ones. So I'm going to delete this one. And I need I need these three. So let's go back here. Face from edges. Select these three. Planar. But they will be planar. And close it. Okay. Now this is not yet a shell, it's just, what is it, four faces. It's almost a tetrahedron, except it's not, it's not regular. I'm going to hide all of these, all of these objects. So we don't accidentally select them. Now we can create a shell out of this, these four faces. Go here, shell from faces, select the faces. There's an option, all faces. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it'll select them all for you, sometimes not. If you have a lot of faces, that can be a real time saver when it works. So now we have all the faces selected. Create a shell from faces. So now we have a shell object. We can hide the faces. The shell object is just the faces. Sort of like the wire is the three edges that are connected, contiguous. This is, the shell is basically uh, contiguous faces into one, one, one entity. But it's not a solid object. We cannot do a boolean operation with this shell, it will fail. Oh, except it didn't. Look inside, you see. Let's uh, check for geometry. No errors. So it did work. But it's not a solid object. It's a shell. So we need to make it into a solid. Let me delete this cut. We'll select the shell. We can go back in here. Solid from shell. Oops, we need to select the object. Create, close it. Now we have the solid object. Hide the shell. Now let's cut the cylinder from this. Notice now it's solid. 
It's not hollow like it was when I cut the shell. So this is all a, a terrific tool except for being non-parametric. You can also create a solid from the part menu. Where is it at? Convert to solid. So you would have your, let's hide it, show the shell. We have the shell selected, part menu, convert to solid. So this, uh, it does this little Python script here that converts that object, that shell, into a solid. two ways to convert to a solid but you need to have that shell you couldn't just select the faces and try to convert it to a solid that would not work it needs to be a shell so now you know what a shell is <clears throat> the difference the difference between a shell and a solid you know a little bit more about the boolean operations and the history of why they're called that uh, we learned a little bit about cross sections. There's one that's parametric here and one that's not. And we learned about this uh, advanced utility to create shapes, which is also here in the menu, Shape Builder. So that's going to be it for today. As always, I thank you for watching and have a great day.